Ever heard the saying that one dog year equals seven human years? Welcome to our channel where we're all about debunking myths like these. We've all heard that popular belief, haven't we? It's been passed down through generations, a simple calculation that tries to equate our beloved pooch's age with ours. But is it really as straightforward as that? Does a one-year-old pup really have the wisdom of a seven-year-old child? Well, we're here to tell you it's not quite that simple. The truth is, the rate at which our canine companions age is not a one-size-fits-all scenario. It can vary widely depending on breed, size, and other factors. So next time someone tells you your dog is seven in dog years, you'll know there's more to the story. Keep watching to learn the truth about this and other dog myths. So, does one dog year really equate to seven human years? This is a question that has puzzled many dog owners and pet enthusiasts for generations. But here's the thing, this widely accepted notion is actually a myth. That's right, a myth. You see, this belief is based on a rather simplistic calculation, one that doesn't take into account the complexity of a dog's lifespan. It's a rough estimate that's been floating around for ages, but it's not entirely accurate. The rate at which dogs age is not a one-size-fits-all scenario. It varies significantly depending on factors like breed, size, and overall health. Just like humans, not all dogs age at the same pace. Let's delve a little deeper. Smaller dog breeds, for instance, tend to live longer than their larger counterparts. A small dog might be spry and energetic well into their teens, while a larger breed dog might begin to show signs of aging much sooner. So, if you have a petite Pomeranian or a diminutive Dachshund, they could still be chasing their tail and fetching balls well into their double-digit years. On the other hand, if you're the proud owner of a Great Dane or a St. Bernard, don't be surprised if they start slowing down a bit earlier. What's fascinating is that in the first couple of years, all dogs, regardless of their breed or size, age quite rapidly compared to humans. It's only after this initial growth spurt that the aging process begins to diverge. So, the next time you're at a dog park and someone casually mentions their dog is seven in dog years, you can enlighten them with some doggy wisdom. It's not as simple as multiplying their age by seven. Remember, understanding our furry friends better helps us care for them more effectively. Every dog is unique, and their aging process is just one of the many fascinating things about them. So next time you hear someone say a dog is seven in dog years, remember, it's not quite that simple. Now, have you ever heard that dogs only see in black and white? It's a common belief, isn't it? However, this is far from the truth. While dogs may not have the same vibrant color vision that we humans do, they are not completely colorblind. You see, dogs perceive the world differently than we do. Their eyes contain two types of photoreceptor cells, rods and cones. Rods help with low light and peripheral vision, while cones are responsible for detecting colors. However, dogs have fewer cone cells compared to humans, allowing them to see fewer colors. Here's a fascinating fact. Humans have three types of cones that can identify combinations of red, blue, and green. On the other hand, dogs only have two types of cones, which can decipher blue and yellow. This means dogs can see some colors, but not all. Their world is not just an old black and white movie, it's more like a desaturated color film. This limited color vision in dogs is akin to a human condition known as red-green color blindness. For people with this condition, reds, greens, and oranges are not easily distinguishable and often appear as muddy hues. They perceive the world in a reduced color palette, just like our canine companions. So when you're playing fetch with your furry friend, remember that they can see the yellow tennis ball against the blue sky, but they might struggle to find a red toy in the green grass. This is because, to them, red and green are not as distinct as they are to us. But don't let this make you feel bad for your pup. Dogs have other super senses to compensate for their limited color vision. Their sense of smell and hearing are incredibly sharp, far superior to ours. They experience the world in ways we can only imagine. So now you know your colorful world is not so dull for your furry friend. They may not see all the colors of the rainbow as we do, but they still live in a world full of color, just a different kind. With this knowledge, we can better understand our four-legged friends and appreciate the unique way they perceive the world around them. Here's another common myth. Dogs eat grass only when they're sick. Have you ever found yourself panicked when you see your pooch munching on a patch of grass, thinking they must be feeling ill? Well, let's set the record straight. While it's true that some dogs may eat grass when they are not feeling their best, it's certainly not the only reason. In fact, for many dogs, eating grass is a completely normal behavior. Some dogs may simply enjoy the taste of grass, believe it or not. Others might be trying to add a little more fiber to their diet. 
Yes, just like us humans, dogs too may seek out certain foods to meet their dietary needs. Now you may be wondering, but isn't grass eating a sign of some sort of deficiency? Well, not necessarily. While it's possible that a dog might eat grass due to a nutritional deficiency, most experts agree that this isn't typically the case. After all, dogs are omnivores, meaning they eat both meat and plants. So, a little bit of grass in their diet isn't out of the ordinary. However, we do need to be cautious. If your dog is eating grass excessively, or if this behavior is accompanied by other signs of illness such as vomiting or loss of appetite, then it's time to consult with your vet. Excessive grass eating could be a sign of an underlying issue like gastrointestinal distress and shouldn't be ignored. So the next time you see your furry friend nibbling on some greens during your walk, don't panic. Remember, it's completely normal for some dogs to enjoy a little salad now and then, but just like with any other behavior, it's all about moderation. So, if your dog suddenly starts munching on more grass than usual, it might be worth investigating. Keep an eye on your pooch's habits, and don't hesitate to seek professional advice if something seems off. After all, our dogs rely on us to keep them healthy and happy. And what about the idea that a wagging tail means a happy dog? You've probably heard this one countless times. It's a common belief that whenever a dog's tail is wagging, it must mean they're happy, right? Well, not exactly. You see, a dog's tail is like their emotional barometer. It's their way of communicating how they're feeling. Sure, a wagging tail can often indicate happiness, but that's not the only emotion our furry friends express through their tails. Just like humans, dogs have a complex range of emotions. They can feel happy, excited, nervous, scared, and even aggressive. And they use their tail to communicate these feelings. So while a wagging tail can mean a dog is happy, it can also mean they're feeling something entirely different. For instance, a dog might wag its tail when it's scared or anxious. It's their way of showing they're uncomfortable and trying to diffuse a tense situation. On the other hand, a stiff, high-wagging tail can signal aggression or dominance. It's the dog's way of saying, I'm in charge here. Now you might be thinking, but how am I supposed to know what my dog is feeling? Well, the key is to look at the rest of their body language. Is their body relaxed or stiff? Are their ears perked up or laid back? Are they showing their teeth or licking their lips? All these signs can help you understand what your dog is trying to tell you. So the next time you see a dog wagging its tail, don't immediately assume they're happy. Take a moment to observe their overall demeanor. Are they relaxed and playful, or are they tense and guarded? Understanding these nuances can help you better understand your dog and respond to their needs more effectively. So, always pay attention to their overall demeanor, not just their tail. Remember, our furry friends have their unique ways of communicating with us. It's up to us to learn their language and ensure they're happy, comfortable, and well cared for. Well, we've certainly busted some common dog myths today. We've learned that the age-old adage of dogs aging seven years for every human year is a bit oversimplified. The rate at which dogs age can vary greatly depending on their breed and size. We've also debunked the myth that dogs only see in black and white. They may not see the world as vibrantly as we do, but they're certainly not living in a monochrome world. We've uncovered the truth about dogs eating grass. It's not always a sign of illness. Sometimes they just enjoy it or have a dietary need. And finally, a wagging tail doesn't always mean a happy dog. It's crucial to look at the entire picture of a dog's body language. Understanding these myths helps us become better companions to our furry friends. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more myth-busting content and helpful tips for you and your furry friends.